Hi, Charles Cherney here, and this is The Real Deal, Episode 11. Today's question is, should one negotiate after a home inspection? So we're going to look at this question from the vantage point of the buyer and then of the seller. So for a buyer who has made an offer in Cambridge and Somerville, Massachusetts, this is the market that I'm working in with a home inspection contingency. There may be a desire on the buyer's part after the home inspection to negotiate further with the seller based on findings. Now, it's important to understand that a home inspection contingency, by definition, as written into most offers, affords the buyer the opportunity to exit the transaction if serious structural, mechanical, or other defect is found in excess of X dollars, with the buyer choosing the X, be it $1, $1,000, $5,000, 10000 the buyer picks the number. But again, it's interesting, many buyers believe that the home inspection contingency is by definition the right to renegotiate the purchase price, or to make demands upon the seller to do certain things. This is not the case. It's an opportunity to exit the transaction. So it's important as a first point of understanding for a buyer to get that there's no guarantee that the seller will either reduce the price or take on certain work items requested based on the home inspection. So understanding it's an opportunity to leave the transaction by definition, still the question does arise, for a buyer after a home inspection as to whether or not they're going to ask the seller to make certain repairs or take certain actions based on findings of the home inspection or possibly to reduce the purchase price. So uh, when is this appropriate? When is this not appropriate? This is a great question. There's so many factors at play. What's the market that this buyer's offer has been accepted in? Is it a hot market? Was there a uh, another offer or two or three or more on the property when the seller accepted the offer, how much heat is on the fire in the event that the buyer doesn't stay the course in terms of someone else's willingness to step up. There is also the question of what it is that's been discovered. So let's say that the home inspector uncovers that the heating system needs to be replaced. A discovery that is new information that the seller didn't realize that the heating system was on its last legs. This is a substantive discovery, and we can appreciate that it is likely the kind of discovery that the seller will be open-minded to negotiating with the buyer about, much more likely in this case to be a credit or a price reduction based on an estimated cost of a new heating system rather than the seller actually proceeding with installing a new system. And the reason in this instance the seller is likely to be amenable to making an adjustment in the purchase price based on this finding is it's a substantive discovery so that if the deal doesn't stay together and the seller is coming back on the market, it falls into the category of disclosure that you must make known to the next potential buyer and to the marketplace that the heating system is beyond its useful life. You know, it's not the kind of thing that's going to go away if it's not resolved or solved in the negotiation between the buyer and the seller. The next buyer is going to have the same concern. So when there's a more substantive discovery made during a home inspection, we can appreciate that the buyer is likely to seek some sort of relief and the seller is likely to consider it. Now, again, in my experience over the last 20 four plus years as an agent, I have found that a uh, buyer and seller negotiating a reduction in the sale price or a credit at closing based on findings is more fruitful than for the seller to raise their hand and agree to do certain work. And the reason for that is, let's say that the seller in this example does go ahead and replace the heating system. It then opens up a series of questions. Well, what person is going to replace the system? What system is going in? What recourse will there be after the system is installed if it's not deemed satisfactory to the buyer who's still on the pathway to closing to own the home? So if, in fact, the seller instead negotiates a credit, then the buyer can choose the contractor and have uh, some input in the decision making as to what's going to happen and have some recourse as the person who hired the person to follow up after the fact if there's any issues that arise. So negotiating a credit instead of taking on actual work is always cleaner for both the buyer and the seller in my experience. Now let's say that at the home inspection, it's discovered that the disposal is not 
working properly. And uh, it's the opinion of the inspector that it would best be replaced. This is one of those smaller potatoes that can come up and then the buyer is pondering whether they're going to request that the seller repair the disposal or replace it or offer a credit at closing for the estimated cost of a disposal. This is the kind of example uh, that is more typical. And if, you know, let's say there's three, four, five, six such small potato items made known by the inspection, you know, it becomes at that point a question of what's the dollar amount, the threshold in the inspection contingency clause, whereby the buyer is made known if the dollar amount exceeds that number, they have the right to exit the transaction. I mean, it's it's a judgment call. It could be that the buyer makes these requests for these smaller items to be addressed and the seller says no. The seller simply says, if you don't want the property in the condition it's in, uh, then fine, exit the transaction. I'll put it back on the market. The seller will, would be in their right to state that. My point here generally is when it comes to a series of smaller items, we can appreciate that no property is perfect, even a newly constructed one, that there's always going to be discoveries a home inspector makes that require attention. And so it comes to be a judgment call for the buyer in terms of what they're requesting. Likewise, it becomes a judgment call for the seller in terms of what they're willing either to do or offer a reduction in the purchase price or a credit at closing to offset. Because yes, even though the seller can let the buyer go by saying no, and the buyer then can exit the transaction, the seller obviously understands that that means starting the process of finding a new buyer all over again. And not always is it the case that it's in the seller's best interest to begin the journey for a new buyer again, right? They may be on a timeline to purchase another property, and they may understand that the next buyer may have a home inspection as well with a new series of small potato demands. So. It's always a matter of judgment, both for the buyer in terms of what they're asking for and the seller in terms of what they're willing to agree to. I think generally speaking, buyers are best served by focusing on bigger ticket items that are of concern. Hopefully they won't come up in the home inspection, but if they do, they likely need to be addressed and likely the seller should be open-minded to resolving the request if one is made on a bigger ticket item and I think, again, both parties, generally speaking, in most instances, will benefit from a credit at closing or a reduction in the sale price to resolve the matter and to seek to avoid, when possible, a punch list of laundry items. Now, look, if it's new construction, that punch list of laundry items ought to be acted on by the developer seller uh, because they've been there working on the building, the project, uh, and it's expected actually that they would get a list of small items to re repair or fix before closing. For an end user owner seller, uh, you know, who doesn't have a pipeline of people in place to address various issues, who would then need to go out and hire, say, a plumber or an electrician or whoever it might be to resolve a certain issue, you know, the buyer may not actually benefit in that case because they don't have any input in who that person is who's coming to do the work. And there's no recourse per se if you know, they're not satisfied, or if there is, it's complicated, right? So that's where a credit at closing as a resolution of the issue uh, might be more appropriate. Look, at the end of the day, the buyer has to decide if they're willing to purchase the property and in what condition at what price, and the seller must decide in the end if they're willing to sell the property, and if so, how they're gonna resolve any issues that arise that require them to make a decision based on buyer uh, demands. So it's, Best in these circumstances, if buyer and seller each have an experienced real estate agent offering guidance based on experience and knowledge and insight of the market and can give uh, you the confidence that you're responding in an appropriate way with the aim to bring the transaction to completion if it's meant to be that it closes. My name is Charles Cherney. I'm a top residential real estate agent here to help you buy the right home or sell for the best price. Reach out at any time by text, telephone, or email if I can be of service, especially if you're giving thought to how to resolve issues that arise after a home inspection. Be in touch. Take care.